Hey guys, welcome back or welcome for the first time. If you're just new here, welcome. I'm Michelle, this is Gio. And we are hey, reptile husband. lovers. And so today we have been asked quite a few things, um, quite a few times from some of our watchers and our viewers. Hey, let us know why are dubia roaches really healthy for our reptiles, our amphibians, and our insectivores. So that is what we're gonna be talking about right. today. That's right, we're gonna be discussing some fun facts uh, about the Dubier. We're gonna discuss the, their life cycle, uh, as well as some of the details of their anatomy. We're also gonna discuss their uh, nutritional value, uh, as well as many reasons why these guys are such popu popular feeder insects, and also the pros and cons of breeding these guys in captivity. Awesome, so stick around. I wanna give you a chance right now. Can you like this video? So it boosts us up in the algorithm on YouTube. And can you subscribe if you have not yet? We love all of our subscribers. And our goal here on this channel is just to do some educational videos. We also have a Dubia roach colony, a Discoid roach colony, and now we're getting into millworms. And, and superworms. Superworms. So you can find us if you're in need of feeders at MightyDubiaFeeders.com. All right, stick around. Let's do this. Let's do it. Okay guys, we're gonna talk about the Dubia Roach. I'm gonna let you know some different names that the Dubia Roach goes by all around the world. They actually don't call them Dubia. The official name for the Dubia Roach is the Blaptica Dubia. And they're actually known by three different names. Yep. So one of them is the Orange Spotted Roach, the Guyana or Guyana Spotted Roach, and the Argentinian Wood Roach. Why don't you tell them about these really cool dubia roaches, all about their life cycle, so they know if they're gonna get into breeding or mm -hmm. having them longer than just a feeder to their animals, how long they're gonna stick around in their house yeah, or garage for. Sure, for. Yeah. So on, on average, the, these guys live about a year and a half to two years, with the females living uh, much longer than the, than the males. Uh, basically, any roach that is not has not reached adulthood is considered a nymph. Okay guys, so I'm going to have Gio here tell you guys because we're talking about dubia roach sizes, so why don't you explain to everybody the sizes that we have on our um, website that are available so that way you guys know and why don't you show them some of ours? Sure, yeah. So we uh, we carry the small, so I'll, I'll show you an example of a small. Small is about a, about a quarter inch to three eighths inch. Let me find one here. We got a little bucket of roaches right here that we're uh, digging through. I don't know if it's in the shot. A buck of roaches. There we go. Get them. They'll move. So that one is a small. And there you go. There you we can go. see that. They come in one fourth to three eighths of an inch. That's right. And those are good for your small insectivores. Um, maybe your gecko, little small geckos or something like that, right, That's right. Gio? Yeah. Or newborn bearded dragons. Because uh, rule of thumb is you don't want to feed your your reptiles, anything that is bigger than the width of their eyes because they can get impacted and that's actually can be fatal. So you wanna make sure you don't give too big of roaches or worms or whatever kind of feeders you give to your um, your different friends, yeah. the medium one, yeah, right? This, this is the next size, this is gonna be a medium. These guys range for about, from like half an inch to about five eighths inch and you can see they're just like, and these are made all around. They're <laughs> And you guys, like, honestly, like, I don't mind holding here. Look at me. I'm so brave. You want to come here to me? I'm all sweaty. It's so hot. We're sitting in our garage, and we're trying to do this hey, in, in look, Texas. Look oh, he's so fast. Uh-oh. Okay. We're sitting in our garage in Houston, Texas area, and it is already in, we're in the end of March, and it's already, like, 85 degrees. degrees outside. It's so hot, and I'm sweating. But anyway, so ladies out there, these are not intimidating to hold. I say that with not a great assault because for real, I've always been very scared of bugs. My parents, if you watch any of our other videos, you know that my parents own their own pest control uh, business. And um, so my dad would come home with all kinds of nasty bugs and creatures. And I was always terrified and freaked out. But I actually have grown to really be comfortable with dubia roaches, having them even in my house. And we'll go over some of the reasons why I don't mind as a woman having them in my house and feeding them to our reptiles as feeders. 
um, and, and he'll go over some of those reasons why yeah. with the anatomy. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, so Let me show you the next size here. So the next size is going to be a large. It's going to be three quarters to an inch. And this guy, I'm going to hold them differently because he's not going to want to just oh, sit yeah, on my finger. Said, I won't hold these because these are large. Come here, little guy. And even Gio recently. That's a large right there. Don't worry, I won't, I won't put it in here. Okay, yeah, don't put that near me. <laughs> That's the there large. he is. He's so cool, though. Actually, you recently just started holding them without yeah, a glove. Yeah, you know, on. I mean, at first you 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 kind of get used to it, and then you realize they're not gonna they're not gonna attack you and kill you. Attack you, to <laughs> kill you, or choke you, or bite you, which is one of the main reasons why yeah. these guys are great. And they they don't carry disease, and we'll talk about that in a little while. And they also don't fly, right? Yeah. Oh, they don't yeah. fly at you, yeah, and so like you know. In Texas, we have those nasty... Mm -hmm, the American cockroach. And they fly at you. <laughs> and they're very scary. And, and anyway, so that is what's, what I really love about these dubia roaches. But okay, did you want to go ahead and talk a little bit more about their life cycles? Yeah, so we're going to talk about... So the dubia roach is what they call ovoviviparous. What a fancy word. Ovoviviparous. It's like a mouthful. Can't say that. I can't even say yeah. that's why you're saying it. <laughs> so basically, what that means is that they don't lay eggs. Okay, but what they do is they develop their babies internally inside a long tube. And I actually got a lady here. We do. We that have has, a lady that's friend. carrying it. Uh, it's the long tube is called the uetheca or uetheca. Uetheca. Some, some people do, do pronounce it differently. But she, I don't want to. I don't want to damage I'm, her. I'm scared for you to touch her because I don't want her to get stressed out. Yeah. So why maybe, don't we just hold her? Okay, hold it up it. like this. Um, let me see if I can turn it around. But I'll show you another up close too. But she's this little friendly lady right here. Um, I don't know if you can probably really see. Uh, but I'll 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 videotape it so that we can just put that up right here yeah, as B-roll. Definitely. Okay, go ahead. Tell them about the Utheka, babe. So the Utheka is just a is just a, a tube, and a female carries that Utheka for about four weeks. Then, as the nymph activity increases, she will expel it. And when the babies are born, they're about one eighth of an inch. And aren't they like clear or white? Yeah, they're they're white. And you know, some people think that when they see a white roach, that they're like, "Ooh, look, it's a it's an albino roach." Well, it's not an albino roach. Mm -mm. It's just that the when they're first born, they're white. And also, we'll talk about their instars as they molt. Mm -hmm. They come out white and they, they turn gray with, with, with time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we really love uh, about the dubia roach is that their exoskeleton is not super hard, right? That's right. Like Madag uh, Madagascan, Madagascar, uh, Madagascar hissing, hissing roaches. roaches are really not good for feeders because their mm -hmm. exoskeleton is very hard and so they're harder to eat. And so for bearded dragons... Well, those are, those are pets anyways. Those are pets. Yeah. He wants to get one yeah. of those. I'm like... Just take your time, dude. Like, we don't need to Come keep... Come on. <laughs> I want... He wants all kinds of stuff, you guys. All kinds of stuff. I'm like, let's let's go slowly. We just got <laughs> we just got discoids. We have dubia. And now we have millworms and superworms. And so I guess he's really working on me for this hissing. Yeah. And, and something about... Um, what what was the other one you wanted? I want the uh, the Halloween hisser. Oh. The Halloween hisser. And we all... Uh, uh, yeah, they're so kind of. So, anyways, right now. Th those are more for like pets, and I heard they are great for your young kids if you have young kids, especially boys, you know, in that they elementary like elementary age kids. Um, but yeah, some of us ladies are like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're growing on me. They're growing on me. So, okay, Gio, since you were just basically saying that when they molt, mm -hmm. they are white, right? That's right. So do you want to explain a little bit more about maybe the life cycle of the molting? And I think they're called instars, you guys. Yeah, that's right. So in the life cycle of a dubia, the, the a nymph will go through seven instars uh, until they mature to, to, to my, uh, adulthood. Uh, and the instar is basically the stage between each molt. Okay. So that's after each molt, that's when they, they're white. Mm -hmm. And after their exoskeleton hardens, they turn a little bit gray. Uh, this time they're super delicate, so guys, don't be reaching around and messing with them because they're very delicate. They basically have no exoskeleton, so they like don't pick them up and hold them, right? Because they're easily injured when they're white. Exactly, yeah, and and basically after each molt, uh, it'll increase their size by around twenty five percent. Now mm -hmm. this is just a general rule, so mm -hmm. not every roach is the same. Uh, there are mm -hmm. going to be some that are just much larger. Uh, we'll show you some examples of two different 
females have, you know, one's mm -hmm. more slender, one other one is a little more voluptuous. So they are not the same. This is a, these are just general mm -hmm. sizes, general rules uh, as they as yeah. increase in size. And there's just different genetics, just like with human beings. There's right. different genetics and genes. And, you know, if you get, say, a roach colony from us, and we do sell those online, we sell yep. roach colonies. So if you get a roach colony from us or a roach colony somewhere else, mm -hmm. you're going to see that your roaches look a little different. Yeah, that's and right. so it's actually a good thing to... Even in, even in even their color is even, even slightly different. Even their color is different. Yeah. Since we're talking about our roach colonies, do you want to tell them what we offer usually yeah. and why we yeah, offer? So, so our, our roach colony, uh, it starts, at, we have different sized nips, uh, and it, basically you don't want to feed those off, regardless of who you get them from, you don't want to feed off your, your colony that you're starting. You want to just have that and let them reproduce, let that mm -hmm. colony get healthy and, and strong and, and just... Yeah, you don't want to feed off your, which if you're going to buy a colony, you're doing it for the sole purpose because you're tired of spending so much money. I don't know about you guys, but we were tired of going to our local pet stores mm -hmm. and spending a lot of money every month just to feed our bearded dragons. So it's we that's why we started our own colony and it's it's going to be great to do that and so that's why you want to make sure when you do get a colony whoever you choose to get one from that you still for a little bit buy some separate ones to feed to your feeders, yeah. feeders for your reptiles and you just let this colony just flourish over mm -hmm. several months several several months right. and so it and our ones that we give ugh, i don't want to I can't off the top of my head remember. I think it's a hundred roaches all together. Yeah, right. yeah. And how many males and females? We do a ratio of one male to four females. Right. So about ten percent. Uh, we we do we'll do a, a custom size, but typically it's a hundred uh, mm -hmm. roaches. And ten percent of those are ma adult males and females with, uh -huh. like she said, one one five ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, and one one thing she mentioned is that you don't want to feed off when you get your new colony you don't want to feed them off because it takes these guys about five months yeah five to, months from, from yeah. newborn nymph to right, right to adulthood yeah those instars it takes that a newborn to adult about five months so yeah so yeah that's why exactly what i'm saying that you don't want to feed off your your um roach colony but when you get one from us you get about the 10 percent being adults and then all the rest is a mix, various sizes, and this is going to make a very healthy colony for you That's because right. you're going to have, let's say you'll get some, you'll get smalls, mediums, large, extra large. You'll get your ten percent of adults. Right. Well, you know what? In a month or so or two, your extra larges and largest will become adults, and they'll mm -hmm. get into that breeding stage themselves, and it will keep flourishing. And then there's already probably even some that are pregnant that you'll receive um, of the females. Right. They may be pregnant and be giving you babies right away. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that, that if you are interested in that, visit us over on our website, mightydubiafeeders.com. And if for some reason, um, sometimes we do put out of stock when we're just running a little low, but if, if you happen to run into an out of stock, just send us an email, you guys, and inquire with us and we'll be happy to try to work out that with you as quickly and as fairly as possible. So we just finished talking about a little bit about breeding, mm -hmm. but now I want to kind of switch gears a little bit and I want to talk about, it's still going to be about breeding, but it's more about breeding dubia roaches in captivity and why their anatomy is, you know, has a part to do with that, right? Why we like it. Of course, yeah. What, the first thing is that the dubias are not good climbers. And the main reason why they, yeah, <laughs> compared to the American roaches that will yeah, jump Yeah, exactly. In, right? Main reason why is because they lack the structure. It's this little lobe uh, called, in between their claws called an aeroleum. Mm -hmm. And this little lobe is like an, a little adhesive pad that most insects have, actually. They, they use mm -hmm. that to stick to smooth surfaces. These guys don't have that. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're great. You can keep it in your, in your bin. They're not mm -hmm. going to climb out. Now, of course. Now, let me just show you mm -hmm. that we're not making it up. I've had this tiny little bin in front of us this whole time, and they have not even climbed up, you know, this. So this is a perfect example that this has been in front of us, That's and right. they have not climbed out of it. Yeah, now, it's worth mentioning that if the container has rough edges mm -hmm. that can, they can grip onto, they mm -hmm. will climb out. So you just have to make sure it's a smooth container 
and you'll be fine. They will not climb out. So you don't recommend if they're going to get some dubia that they do any sandpapering nah. or anything because that's not going to be right. good. They're going to climb up that's that, right? right? Yeah. Any, any, any plastic or material that has imperfections, they'll be able to climb, that, grab onto that. But as long as it's smooth, you're, you'll be fine. Okay, awesome. Okay, Gio, so what is the second thing? So they don't climb, which mm -hmm. we just talked about. So what else is great about the dubia? They don't jump. Ooh, you know? wee. And one Ooh, of the main wee. reasons is mm -hmm. because they don't have a, a femur of, let's say, like a cricket or a grasshopper. So that's I a hate crickets and grasshoppers. Those are, I would rather have a dubia any day camping out in my house in a box. That's right. And then another reason why they're great is because they don't fly. Oh, wow. So yeah. even though the males have a have long wings that runs through the entire length of their body. Do you feel comfortable holding a male oh, yeah. to let's, show let's, them? Let's show them. Let's, let's show this guy that. Ooh, I'm going to I'm going to get away from you a little bit. I don't know. The the males kind of freak me out. We'll get it real close to the camera, babe. Ah! Okay, that's good. You can put it back. <laughs> so, as you can see the male has those wings. Yeah. Sorry, let me flip you back over. So the males have those wings, but they they cannot fly. Um, yeah. Now, if they're like up high, and they, they'll kind of glide themselves down for, you know, like a... Like flutter or glide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. But their wings are just not powerful enough to increase altitude. So they just mm -hmm. basically just kind of flutter down and just kind of land, you know? And then the females... Yeah, do they have wings? They have these four wings, uh, but they, they have no flight control whatsoever. So they basically, mm -hmm. if they fall, they're, plop. They're, they're just like, plop. they're screwed. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, poor female. Yeah, well... I, I wish they had, I mean, I wish they did at least a little flutter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, another reason why there's the guys are great is because they, they make no noise. There's no chirping oh. like crickets. Yeah. These guys are quiet and you mm -hmm. will, you, you will not hear them uh, mm -mm. other than maybe just kind of when they're, when they're feeding, you kind of hear mm -hmm. them just kind of moving around. But other mm -hmm. than that, there's there's pretty much silence. Yeah. You won't even know they're there, but I honestly like it when I hear them because it's kind of a cool sound when you yeah. do feed them. It reminds me of rain. I know that sounds so weird. <laughs> and I've put a short on our channel and I'm like, does this sound like rain? And people people are like, yeah, that does yeah. seem like that. Cause you'll just hear it and it'll sound kind of like a little- do, Maybe we can do that next to our bed. Maybe, gonna... maybe we, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> we, that's what we have rain apps for, babe. That's yeah. what we have rain yeah. apps for. Okay, so so I don't know about you guys, but the next thing is also pretty important. All of these, are important but the next thing is i don't know about you guys but i don't like stinky things i don't like <laughs> bo you know what i mean so you want to tell them the next thing yeah these guys are odor free yay you know? so i mean who wants a stinky feeder in their house right mm -hmm. uh like a cricket like, i don't know? i don't uh now should we tell them about the, the yeah the, we the, should we should okay. Let, let's not mention any names yeah. but let's just call it out for sure. what that is so one time we purchased some uh, roach chow and it contained fish flakes. And the thing about it is, it's that it made our bins very smelly. We could not figure out for at first. We were like, well, did you feel We're them? like, did you give them some shrimp or something yeah. up in here? It stunk so I, bad. Yeah, no, I'm not, we're not, we're not hating on anybody that uses that in their roach Everyone chow. Everyone does something different. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of learn and sometimes people just go by their budgets, you know, sure. and, um, but let's just say, we're not a big fan of fish flakes. Yeah, we're just not big, we're just mm -hmm. not fans of that. Mm -hmm. uh, our our roach our mighty uh, dubia roach chow, which comes in six and twelve ounce, mm -hmm. does not contain fish flakes. Again, we're not roaches love this stuff, you guys. Yeah, and we're not hating on if you use fish flakes on your roach chow. We're not hating on you. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that we don't do that for that reason. We don't want our mm -hmm. stinky bins. We have very sensitive noses, and mm -hmm. we're just it does not make it an enjoyable experience to open up a bin and have this huge waft of stinky, shrimpy, sm fishy smell. It's not good. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to. Um, Check out our other video that we did. We did one on feeding dubia roaches, mm -hmm. and you can see how much they love it. They love this chow, you guys, for yeah. real. So, but one of our customers even said, "Do you put Italian seasoning in that?" <laughs> I almost wanted to put that yeah, on my pizza. Yeah, I put a little pizza pizza <laughs> seasoning up nah, in there. No, we don't. We're not giving out, we're not giving out our, our, our recipe, but no, it's not. It's that's not contain Italian seasoning. It's very organic, nice smelling. So let's just say that right. it's all natural stuff. We don't use anything that is bad because think about it. These dubia roaches are going to go inside of your pets and your reptiles and 
the, the very sweet creatures that you love. And right. we need to gut load them properly because they're going to be going inside of your dragon or your amphibian or frog or whatever. That's right. So you want to make sure that your feeders are healthy and eating things that are good and beneficial for your pets. Definitely, definitely, yeah. And another reason why these guys are great, no infestations. Ooh wee, that's yeah. important, right? You know, the thing is like, there's like over 4,000 species of cockroaches and of which of those, 30 of them are considered pests around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the nastiest ones are the, you probably guys are very familiar with the German cockroaches. Oh yeah, the, the little ones that, yeah. that can infest people's houses. Uh, and then the mm -hmm. bigger one, the American cockroach, was what some people call the tree roach that you mm -hmm. kind of see. We definitely those see those are here the ones Texas. that fly at us. Yeah, those yeah, are scary, yeah. not fun. And also, there's also the Australian and the Oriental cockroach. The dubia roach are not these guys. Okay, these guys do not carry disease. Uh, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, if they do happen to get out of their bin for whatever reason, one time that happened to us, mm -hmm. and because we had. So here when it gets cold, we don't want our colonies to stay outside. So we just, you know, we regulate temperatures so that they yeah, can sure. live and have good, healthy, strong uh, colonies. We have a cold snap come through. We take them upstairs and we have a, an extra bedroom and, you know, we do all our feeding and everything. And so one time a male out of all of them, why could it not have been a baby or a medium? Right. I would have been fine with that. But a male got out. And I think he must have like just put an egg crate when he was feeding them too close to the side and it got out and it scurried somehow mm -hmm. to my son's room, which was adjacent to this room that they were in. That's right. And he was like, uh, there's a roach. There's a roach on my, uh, on my bean bag. But it had already <laughs> died, you guys. It was a male roach and he was already dead. I mean, it mm. was like within not that many hours. Right because they have very specific needs um, in order to survive. They have right. to have the heat and humidity and all of that. They're very particular. And so they're not like the American cockroach or the German that can just infest your home. Yeah. They're just basically, if they get out, they're gonna just, you know, probably die within 30 feet, probably be found flat with on, their their, back. on their back yeah. and begging to go back <laughs> into their nice little warm home, so. That's right. And also, they're not the they're not also the species that you probably see in uh, like sewage, uh, like like the uh, Oriental cockroach. Those guys live in sewage, and those are the ones that carry all the all that foul smell and and carry disease. Yeah. So yeah, that's these are all pluses. These are all pros to why you should have dubia in your home to feed your reptiles, whether you're having them for a roach colony or for feeders. These are all thumbs up, you guys. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay guys, so let's talk a little bit now about nutritional, why the dubia roach is really, really good. It's not a perfect feeder, okay? So that's just disclaimer right there. There's no such thing truly as a perfect feeder mm -hmm. for your reptiles or amphibians or insectivores. But of the ones available out there, it is one of the better ones, you guys. And so Gio's gonna tell you about why it's one of the better ones. Yeah, we're gonna talk about five five major categories, why they're, uh their nutritional value is, is exceptional. Uh, the first one is gonna be the moisture content. And, okay. the, and the moisture content is an important aspect of the composition of feeder insect because that kind of relates to the, your animal's ability to digest the food, digest mm -hmm. the, those insects that they have, they eat. Uh, the dubia have about a 66% moisture content. Which is really, which is really, really good, really you guys. Good. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is their fat, con fat content. Mm -hmm. So basically an extremely high fat content diet is not good for your reptiles. It's not good for them, right? Yeah, so, okay. but you know, roaches are typically a well-balanced meal for, for your insectivore. Mm -hmm. uh, ro Dubia is ranging in about the 7% range of, mm -hmm. or in their fat content. Mm -hmm. So that means that you can give Dubia roaches every day, you guys. So unlike wax worms or super worms, those are more like treats. And so mm -hmm. you have to, um, you know, Think of dubia roaches as an everyday good a protein staple, staple source of food for your reptiles. And then you can go ahead and also um, mix it up in variety because that's really important with your mm -hmm. reptiles. Um, dubia is one of the best ones, but that's not all you want to give. That's you want right. to put some mealworms in there and some greens. And then maybe once a week we give tater tot. You met him in the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
we give him some super worms a few of those like maybe every seven to ten days yeah um and we haven't tried a wax worm yet we haven't tried those we yet, haven't yeah. But we have uh, tried black soldier flies, and those are really good too. They're and great. really cool because they're high in calcium and they don't need dusting. And so that's one of the things mm -hmm. that you know you need to know that, unfortunately, because dubia roaches are not perfect, they do need um, the calcium that's dusting. Right. They do need to be dusted, that's for sure. Okay, so what is the third one, Geo? Well, we're gonna talk about their chitin. Chitin, okay. Some people say chitin, but, it, but, chitin but, chitin. It, but it's pretty much chitin. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Well, tell us what is chitin. Well, what chitin is, is basically a component, it's a molecule, and it's the major component in their exoskeleton. Uh, some feeders are have a high chitin content, mm -hmm. and their exoskeleton is very tough. Okay. Know? So, like the Halloween hissers and yeah, some and of the hissers, especially like the of... yeah, especially like the adult hissers, those you probably don't want to feed off to like you know like your... we were saying earlier now if there if you if you happen to run into some of the nymphs those are probably okay mm -hmm. uh, but definitely not like not the large mm -hmm. ones those exoskeletons okay. are super tough um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is their protein okay yeah Let's so their protein that. the the protein content oh wait time out why is is it called chitin chitin, chitin. what if too much chitin what can cause what can happen in your animal? Well, the impaction. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so they you... can get impacted. I think we mentioned that a little bit earlier, but that's basically an obstruction in their the digestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that can, you know, if not found out really pretty quickly and addressed pretty quickly, um, it can it can make your beardy so sick or your your animal very sick and they probably need to go to a vet pretty quickly yeah. so that it doesn't turn fatal so yeah for sure yeah yeah so dubia roaches have are lower in that because mm -hmm. they're real soft and that's why they're one of the better source feeders that's for, right. for reptiles okay so about protein protein so protein the dubia range in about the 22 percent range in, in protein uh Compared to let's say a cricket, which is like more like fifteen percent. So their so protein. So twenty two versus fifteen. Yeah. So you can mm. see that their their protein content is is pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, their uh, calcium to for phosphorus ratio. Mm. So what calcium is mm -hmm. is four. Calcium mm -hmm. is the one of the most important nutrients for mm -hmm. reptiles. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes their bones strong, and. Yeah, and then and they also need vitamin D three to help metabolize yeah. the fats and the proteins. Uh, mm -hmm. So oftentimes you will hear about the calcium to phosphorus ratio, uh, the ideal ratio being about a two to one ratio. Mm. Uh, now the dubias are one to one and a half. So as you can see, they're not they're not they're not, not perfect. perfect. Not, not perfect. Not perfect. And that's the reason why they have to be dusted because right. they lack they lack mm -hmm. that that calcium. They like that, but with dusting, they're very good. That's right. right? Very good. They sure are. <laughs> so we just talked about all the great attributes about the dubia roach. Mm -hmm. uh, and But we also want you to consider a few things. We want you to consider that the dubia roach is not a perfect feeder, like mm -hmm. as we mentioned er earlier. Right. We mentioned that a lot already. Yeah. And we recommend that you that you offer your insectivore, your reptile, mm -hmm. or whatever your pet is, a wide range of different foods a wide variety a wide variety mm -hmm. you know so you want to you know you don't want to just stick to one thing and one thing only some people mm -hmm. just stick to let's say crickets and feed them crickets you know you want you want to change it up mm -hmm. with them there are you have to be careful and really pay attention that that's the nutritional value of every insect there's some insects like like you mentioned mm -hmm. that you can't just give that give that to them every, every day. day like yeah. the wax worms and the, uh, the, super, the worm. super worms right so just to give you guys a little example of what we feed Tater Tot. Mm -hmm. Tater Tot is nine months old, and so he's still considered, of course, until they're one years old, a juvenile bearded dragon. So if any of you guys have under one years old, they should have about 15 to 20 insects a day. And they should really, even, even if they're younger, like four, five, up to six months, they should actually be fed three up to three times a day, different times in the day. I feed tater tot at nine months, an a.m. feeding and a p.m. feeding, mm -hmm. but not before bed or when the lights would go off. 
but I feed him about 10 bugs in the morning and 10 bugs in the late afternoon. And I'll might of the 10, maybe give them five dubia and then five millworms and then the same thing at night or if it's time for maybe it's been a week or so and I haven't given him any super worms, then I might go ahead and swap a few of those for the millworms or for the dubia. And of course you always wanna give collard greens, mustard Definitely. greens, those kind of greens. He likes carrots. He loves carrots, yeah. Um, he's a big fan of that. Um, you can also give things like raspberries and blueberries, but I would even do those um, fruit type of things very sparingly because I noticed that it gives them kind of runny stools, so, mm -hmm. which is not fun to clean up. Yes. So, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, they need a, a wide variety and I even dust um, the calcium throughout his um, green, green leafy vegetables and, mm -hmm. and and the bugs and i even put all the bugs on top of his green leafy so when he's trying to get some of the bugs he also gets some greens in his mouth or carrots and Whoa, stuff like that tricky i'm smart Hold yeah on. yeah and then uh so another thing that you want to consider uh before you're breeding these guys is uh you allergies some people are very mm -hmm. allergic to them uh now we luckily have not I haven't had any we too bad reactions. Yeah, we to the haven't press. had any reaction, right? So, yeah. but but some people they're they're kind of they have a reputation for causing some allergies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you before be careful before handling, you might have to wear gloves. Yeah, uh, or, and know, a mask. A mask. Uh huh. Uh, like and then, even an N95 mask. If you are a person that has really bad allergies from the get go that you don't want to inhale the frazz, which is their poop. Their poop, yeah, it's yeah, dusty. Yeah, dusty, and, and it has that smell anyways. Um, but yeah, if you're a person, you don't really want to be inhaling that. An N95 mask tends to work better than a regular yeah. um, blue mask that we were all wearing during COVID times and all that. Yeah, and, and one, one thing important is to keep their colonies clean. Mm -hmm. If you put fresh food, we like to, uh, once we put fresh vegetables and fruits, we like to clean it up. Uh, we give them enough for that day. We don't let stuff just sit in their bins for days mm -hmm. and days because that, that grows that grows mold. mold yeah. And then it, you know, then you start attracting fruit flies. And it stinks. So you know, even though they are a roach, mm -hmm. uh, we still like to keep their habitat clean. Uh, mm -hmm. We like to cl keep their stuff clean, and that might help out with all that allergic reactions that mm -hmm. just, some people would have. And we sort our um, colonies at the beginning of each month, and so that's when we really try to clean out all that junk. We leave a little tiny bit of frass maybe behind for the little baby nymphs because they like to hide in there and mm -hmm. eat eat that actually. Yeah. But we try to clear out most of it because we want to keep these roaches living in a very hygienic yeah. and also keep us from having developments in the future of any allergies. That's right. So the last thing we want to talk about is their legality. Okay. And you know, if you if you live out in Florida uh, in Hawaii oh, okay. or Canada, mm -hmm. uh, you, these guys are illegal. So dubia, make sure, dubia, are dubia, illegal. Roaches, okay. dubia roaches are illegal in, in Florida, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and Canada. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you, you know, you don't want to get caught smuggling these guys because you will get a fine. Mm. Now in Florida, what is legal is our discoid roaches. Right, and discoid. Discoid roaches, and it's, we are raising those right now. And mm -hmm. you know, we will let you know when those are available on our website. And ladies, the discoid roaches are so cute. Not when they're adults. <laughs> not when they're adults. I'm still scared of the adults. But the babies are very interesting. They have an interesting little pattern on them, don't they? They got little little speckles on them. Yeah, they're like they're very interesting. I call them checkered pattern. But anyways, um, yeah. So if you're in Florida and you, we know that in Florida, our Floridian friends and neighbors, we know that you guys struggle and you have hard times sometimes finding feeder roach feeders for your for your reptiles over there since you cannot have uh, dubia and you're looking for discoid make sure you do check out our website because like i said and mentioned that we are breeding those currently and we should have some available pretty soon so there is a subscribe uh to our like an email subscription mm -hmm. that you can get reach emails or you can reach out to us on our email and you can let us know hey we really need some of those because they are they can be kind of hard to find oh, yeah, this sure, yeah. um and that's kind of a desperation feeling um if you don't have food for your reptiles that's and right. stuff so 
Anything else you wanted to say before we were going to wrap up this video? I mean, I think we covered a lot of things. You know, we appreciate mm -hmm. you guys watching. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope that you would subscribe to our channel. Yes. We will do, be doing a lot of these videos in the future. We'll be doing a comparison of Dubia Discoid to kind of show their yeah, nutritional the, value side by side. Like the differences. Pound. Okay, yeah, very so, cool. So we'll be doing that soon. Also, we're going to be doing um, a video on our millworms and our colony and how we're setting up our colony, how we've done that, mm -hmm. how we are breeding those. Right. And so if you have an interest in those and maybe purchasing some for feeders or maybe for your own breeding colony, right. you might want to look out for that. One of my most favorite videos though that we've done recently since, you know, we've began this channel in the beginning of the year is when we went to the Conroe oh, yeah, that was fun. Reptile Show and that was really a lot of fun. And we have, I'll go ahead and link it for you up here. That way you can just click on that um, and go check out those reptiles. They're really cool. A lot of chameleons. Um, and what's really cool about that video that a lot of our uh, subscribers have mentioned is that we didn't just concentrate on just the snakes. Yeah, you know, yeah. We really did a good job of just covering you know, all, all mm -hmm. the different lizards and even they even had some... Turtles, tortoises, of, oh, yeah. frogs, Pac-Man frogs. And we did a lot of interviews because I'm a big time... Uh, I like to just learn. I love to get ed educated. Mm -hmm. And so I really, really love talking that we were talking to all the vendors yeah. and we gave the vendors information. So if you guys really can appreciate something like that, I'll link it for you up here. Just go ahead and check that out. It's called the Conroe Reptile Show. Yeah, we thank you guys. We thank you so much. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. We're Michelle and Gio, and we'll see you guys next time. See you guys. Bye-bye for today.